This is like crazy. <laughs> yeah, welcome to Friday the 13th, everybody. I have had this stream going and I keep saying, like, why will it not load on my iPad? Why will it, why will chat not load? Why is my stream not loading? And I've just been talking away and trying to figure out why I couldn't get chat to load. Yeah, guess what it was? Um, the settings on the video in the last update had been somehow magically changed to private settings. <laughs> yeah, so you guys weren't seeing it, and then I wasn't seeing it, and then that's why I couldn't see chat. So that is the fabulousness that continues into Friday the 13th. Now I think we should be up and running, finally, actually publicly, where everyone can see it, me included, and this is a rundown of our teams that we have available tonight. These are the unsold teams in Gala and Preferred and Chrome. And we are also, we have a little case of uh, Impeccable Football. If anyone's interested in that, that would be a random team break. That one's not listed on eBay. And <laughs> so whoever is in right now, will you please jump into chat? It looks to me like it is loaded now that I finally figured out that the problem was uh, the setting had changed from public to private. That's always delightful. But I think everybody can see it now, <laughs> as opposed to the first pass when no one could see it because the settings were on private. Definitely. It's not just even today. It's not just like today is Friday the 13th. This whole week has been Friday the 13th, the entire flippin' week. Anyway, here we go. One box of 2016 Panini Gala Football. This is break number eight, the eighth time I have broken it, or we have broken it. Uh, our eBay end date was tonight at 10.13, uh, live stream Friday 10.13, Friday the 13th at 10.30 Eastern. Of course, we all know the first uh, four or five minutes of me talking were... Nobody saw it because it was set to private. Fun times. Winning bidders are on the left, or teams are on the left. Winning bidders across from it on the right. Anything you see that says no bids buyback, which there are a lot tonight in the first couple of breaks. Anything comes out for one of those teams, it will hang out here with me. Normally, you would have been able to buy that before the break if you had been able to see it, which, yeah... Yeah, those pesky little uh, settings changes prevented that. I swear I hate when they update that software. Something always goes wrong every time they update it. Last night, we couldn't get a stream initiated. Tonight, I didn't notice that the setting had changed to private. It's always something fun and exciting around here. But at least we're to Friday. Hi, Matthew. How are you? I hope that you're having a good day. My day has been amazingly, um, insanely terrible. I mean, like, that Disney film that's called, uh, whatever, like, somebody's terrible, horrible, very bad, no good day. That is my day in a nutshell. It's actually my whole week, but, but yeah, specifically my day. <laughs> but Matthew, I'm glad to, I'm glad to hear somebody's had a good day. I'm just, frankly, I'm glad that I figured out why I couldn't see the chat. Because I'm like, I can see the stream, but I can't see the chat. Why is nothing loading? Yeah, so it only took me, what, four minutes to figure out that the settings had changed to private from public. First out, Jeremy Hill to 49 for the Cincinnati Bengals. There's only one base card in Gala. Everything else is a hit. And that was our base card right there. Uh, shipping, guys, on Gala and on our next break, Preferred. Both of those, as you know, were free shipping breaks, no cost to the bidder. This is number 25, Mike Evans for the Bucks. That's a nice uh, five, wait a minute, one, two, three, yeah, five color patch. And a really nice looking piece of material on the Mike Evans. So the Preferred and the Gala will go out approximately a week from today. That's how free shipping stuff rolls these days. It goes out once every six to seven days. If you have another package that goes out in the interim, you know, the free shipping cards would hitch a ride. If this is all you have, look for it to ship in about a week. Paxton Lynch for the Broncos, numbered to 99, is our next hit. 
And of course, there's a different shipping schedule for Bowman Chrome Baseball, which uh, opens uh, after we do our football tonight because that is a paid shipping break. So it has a different schedule. Zach Ertz for the Eagles. That one is to 49. Nice little on-card auto. And he's having a good year. You can see there's a little chipping down there uh, in the lower corners. Uh, maybe a hair in the upper corners as well. But that's kind of common on this stuff. And then finally we have for the Titans to 99, Doriel Green Beckham. That one is a sticker auto. And... Looks to be in pretty good shape. Maybe a tiny little imperfection. Nothing too, nothing too dramatic on any of these, but a few little imperfections. So to recap our hits, we have Titans, Eagles, nice little Zach Ertz, Broncos with the Paxton Lynch, Mike Evans for the Bucks. And then Jeremy Hill for the Bengals. And that is all of Gala. And that's actually the last box of Gala, too, I think. So we won't be uh, breaking any more of that. At least probably not anytime soon. So that has that one rocking and rolling. Now we're going to be on Preferred. So let's get the spreadsheet up for that. William, there were some unsold teams in Preferred, as a matter of fact. Um, there were quite a few. <laughs> And I thought that I was putting them up uh, where you guys could see the list of them earlier and trying to, you know, see if anybody was interested in them before the break started. And then, of course, as you probably heard me mention, yeah, I figured out after a few minutes when I couldn't see chat, why I couldn't see chat, the whole stream had been set to private instead of public. So no one saw it. But yeah, <laughs> I had good intentions. One box of 2016 Panini Preferred Football break number two. Our same end date tonight, uh, Friday the 13th. Team names on the left, winning bidders across from it on the right-hand side. Same as our last uh, box, which was Gala. This was also a free shipping break, no charge to the bidder. And free shipping things do go out once a week. So if you have... Nothing else going out besides what you hit in, in preferred, then look for it to ship in six to seven days. If you have another hit that goes out before that, then preferred will most likely hitch a ride and go along in that package a little sooner, a little ahead of schedule. So that's kind of uh, how free shipping, how I'm doing all the free shipping these days, just to keep it cost effective and so I can keep offering it. Carson Wentz and Wendell Smallwood to 199 for the Eagles. That is our uh, booklet in this box of preferred. A little dual material there. Then we have for the Seahawks, Kenny Lawler. And Kenny here is numbered to 10. That's 5 of 10 on the Lawler. Uh, that is a sticker auto. I had to get a little closer look. A stupid Panini Rewards Point. They replaced a hit with a Panini Rewards Point and Preferred, which is like a $180 box of cards. <laughs> you guys know how insanely unhappy that makes me. Devontae Booker for the Broncos. That one also numbered to 10. Cardell Jones for the Buffalo Bills. Number 225, nice uh, silhouette there. Of course, there's always an on-card auto silhouette in each box of uh, 2016 preferred. That one, a two-color patch. Now we will get out via random our 400-point Panini Rewards card. And you know what, guys? Honestly, I have complained to Panini about this. Like, I, I, it, it makes me insane when they replace hits with rewards cards because I don't find that to be rewarding like at all <laughs> and I think if they're going to put rewards points in there they should be in addition to the hits not instead of the hits and I have made my uh, point known to Panini many times but I would encourage anybody that feels the same way that I feel go on to Twitter or Facebook or one of their public facing uh social media accounts and voice your opinion maybe they will stop doing that especially in an expensive box of cards like preferred like why would they think 
in anybody's wildest dreams would you want to hit out of an expensive box like that replaced with a points card. And it is going to the Denver Broncos via random. So that's, uh, that's the end of that rant. But just, yeah, so you know, um, that's how I feel about it. I don't know how you feel about it. Maybe you're okay with it. If you are, that's cool. If you are unhappy with it like me, voice your opinion. And maybe one of these days they will stop this stuff. So, our rewards card awarded to the Broncos via random. Our silhouette out of this box, Cardale Jones to 25 for the Buffalo Bills. For the Broncos, Devontae Booker, numbered to 10. For the Seahawks, Kenny Lawler, also numbered to 10. That's a sticker auto if I... I think I said that earlier, but just in case somebody's skipping ahead just to the recap. And then our dual materials, Carson Wentz and Wendell Smallwood to $199 for our booklet in preferred. That's also the last box of 2016 preferred that I have on hand. So don't know if we'll break that one again or not, but if we don't, we'll definitely break some 2017 preferred, which will be coming out before you know it. And Jasmine, oh, you had the She-Hawks, uh, the She-Hawks, <laughs> you had the Seahawks in preferred, Jasmine. If you did, you got that nice little Kenny Lawler. I'm assuming that's, uh, I'm assuming that's what you're letting me know there, is that, maybe, is that you had the Seahawks. So this is going to bring us to our full case of 2017 Bowman Chrome Baseball. This is break number eight so the eighth time that we have broken uh, bowman chrome it's same format as before we'll scroll down through here and give you a chance to see your name and lights across from your team shipping on bowman chrome is a little different in the sense that you guys uh, pay the shipping cost because we know for sure of course every team's gonna pull something from this break so shipping on this, I am anticipating, will be in the range of Tuesday to Wednesday. Uh, if I can get it to you sooner, I will. Right now, I don't anticipate that I will be able to get it to you sooner. Um, I tell you, as I have said before, this week has been unbelievable. And it has been just one thing after another the entire week. So I am not ahead, like sometimes I can get myself ahead. I am not ahead at this point. <laughs> so I would say that probably our Bowman Chrome will go out Tuesday or Wednesday, somewhere in that range. Obviously I always shoot for the earliest day possible. And maybe, maybe that we, that now we've gotten past this, uh, this cursed Friday the 13th, Maybe I can uh, have a little more peaceful weekend and things will get back on track. Maybe I can get caught back up and get ahead and get them to you sooner. But that's kind of what we're looking at otherwise. Oh, Jasmine, I think, uh, I think that the Seahawks, weren't the Seahawks sold and preferred? I think they, didn't they have, I think they were, weren't they? Usually the Seahawks are sold. Um, I don't know, maybe... Well, if, uh, if it's not sold, uh, you can shoot me a message over on eBay and we can talk about that Kenny Lawler, but really I thought it was sold. So each of our master boxes here in Bowman Chrome has two mini boxes inside of it. Each of our mini boxes will have an autograph. So that's going to give us, uh, that's going to give us, what, uh, 24 autographs in this break. We'll also find a bunch of numbered parallels and, and inserts. One of our insert series is Arizona Fall League, and all of the cards in Arizona Fall League series We'll have our pretty little uh, rainbow of colors, like refractors. So each, I won't call that out every time, because every, every card in Arizona Fall League is made that way. 
likewise for our Bowman Scouts Top 100. All of those also uh, refract. And we'll find several of them throughout as well. Sunday night, I don't think we have any Chrome opening tomorrow. I think it's all basketball scheduled to open tomorrow. But we do have more Chrome opening on Sunday. But Sunday's Chrome is the Jumbo. And, of course, they call it HTA Choice, which sometimes Tops calls their Jumbos Jumbos. Sometimes they call them HTA Choice. So I think in the title I probably called them both, HTA and Jumbo. So look for that designation in the title. And in that particular configuration, there's no base at all. It's all hits. And it will be 36, I believe it is, 36 autograph hits in the Jumbo or HTA choice, whatever you want to call it. Double check on the number of hits, but I'm fairly certain that that is correct. And there's always at the bottom in the description that I have on uh, eBay, if you scroll down towards the bottom of that description, you will always find product information from the manufacturer where it will talk about, you know, how many boxes per case or how many cards per pack, how many packs per box, and, you know, the stuff that you're likely to find in it, etc. So down at the bottom, it will tell you for sure, but I am 99% sure that it is three per box, 36 per case. So we'll get into some of that. Uh, I believe it is Sunday. And then we have more regular, a couple more cases of regular Bowman Chrome, and then we'll have a few more cases of Bowman Chrome Jumbo. So we'll probably be through most of the Chrome probably be finished or finishing up about this time next week, next weekend sometime. In the meantime, Top's Update series comes out. That's on Wednesday. And we will be opening um, some Update Jumbo starting on Wednesday. And that will be done in half case breaks at the moment and honestly that is just because of the vast number of cards in each box and there's five I think it's 500 cards per box of jumbo so a half case is 1500 cards a full case is 3,000 cards and that's just a tremendous number of cards to have to try to sort and ship and all of that. So that's why it's broken up into half cases. And what I may do after we get through a little bit of it, I might start breaking some full cases and just not ship the base, ship just the inserts and rookies and hits. But in the beginning, at least, we're gonna do, we'll ship all the cards. And those, of course, again, all listed as half cases. As you can see, this takes a while to get everything out of here. So if, you know, we still got a little ways to go, too. So if you have a, you want to go walk the dog or have a snack or whatever, <laughs> watch the game, whatever you want to do there, you got a few minutes because it's going to take a while to get all these out of the wrappers as well. Nothing about this is a fast process. Which the last score that I saw had... Houston was up 2 nothing. the last I saw. I don't know if that's changed or not, but... You figure the Astros have got to have a little bit of an advantage in the fact that they've been kicked back resting for several days, whereas, of course, the Yankees had to roll all the way to game five and didn't have much downtime before they had to roll right back into playing 
Houston. So, yeah. Oh, no. It should be a good matchup, though. Earlier tonight, I was watching uh, Big Blue Madness. The tip-off of... It used to be called Midnight Madness, but it was the tip-off of... UK's uh, basketball season, the official tip-off. So that was kind of fun. See all of our guys, all of our new young players getting all hyped up. I think this is our... I think this is our bye week, maybe, in football. For UK, anyway, not for the Steelers. The Steelers have got to play the Chiefs, and man, you all saw that game last weekend. I didn't get it in my market, but I saw the highlights, and of course, I saw the score. Good grief, Pittsburgh was terrible. My Steelers just stunk up the joint, and the Chiefs have been so good all year. I really don't think Pittsburgh's going to do very well this weekend. I don't usually feel that way either. I usually think my Steelers can win even when everybody else is like, oh, they're going to get crushed. You know, there's no way they're going to win. I'm always thinking, yeah, we can. We can win. We can do it. Oh, man, I'm feeling like we're going to get thumped by the Chiefs this weekend. It does not seem like a good... Uh, a good time for us to be playing them as poor well maybe I don't know maybe it could be I guess if they get all fired up about how badly they played last weekend maybe they maybe that can serve as some motivation and get them uh, on track but if not and they play as badly as we played last weekend well that's just gonna be I mean that'll be a joke they will, they will blow us out of that place with, if Ben throws five more interceptions. But it is that magical kind of uh, time of year where everything converges. We have basketball, football, and baseball all in swing at the same time. It's kind of fun. I know, there's so many. <laughs> and this is like only half of it that I'm taking out right now. we still got, maybe not even quite half. We've got all that back there still yet to do. Two, four, six, seven, like, yeah, this isn't even quite half. There's still 14 boxes or so back there that we'll have to go through the same unwrapping process with. The standard refractors in this, if I didn't say this already, that are not parallel, i.e. they don't have another color, are numbered to 499. So any of those we see will have that same number. Then, of course, we have a variety of numbered parallels. Uh, the green is to 99, the gold is to 50, the orange is to 25, purple is to... 250, blue is to 150. With a couple of exceptions, there are some uh, like purple shimmer and blue shimmer, a few of those that will be in the 70th anniversary parallel. They'll have up in the corner that little uh, 70th logo, and those have not been numbered when we pull that, when we pull them. I would assume that it will be the same this evening as it has been in the other breaks in that regard.
Also some redemptions that we have the possibility of pulling. We pulled uh, actually three redemptions out of the case last night. Three total redemptions, like uh, more than normal. But they were good ones. It was uh, Aurora to 25 for the Giants was one of them. The Kimoniac, the Phillies was one. And the third one was a White Sox whose name I can't remember at the moment. And, of course, we've got the uh, Khalil Lee, the kid from the Royals. He has uh, both live autographs and redemptions in this product and I have pulled him both ways I've pulled him live and I've pulled his redemption so you never kind of know which one you're going to get but but we could get either one for him so again lots of base in here uh, this is the Bowman Scouts top 100 that I referenced earlier that those will all refract every one that we pull in that whole series will be a refractor there's an Arizona Fall League that, again, is one that uh, each one we pull, we will see is a refractor. We have a little uh, green shimmer for the Angels. That one is to 99. And most of the parallels I'm just kind of setting in little piles over here. So if off to my right. So if you guys do want to recap any of that at the end of the break, let me know and we can do that. Gomez for the Giants, unnumbered, as our first autograph hit. Then we have Joshua Lowe to $4.99 for the Rays. And if you're wondering, there is a mat uh, over to my right as well. It's a mat that I use for sorting. Of course, you can see the mats that we have down for breaking, but I think most of you guys probably already know that already, but might be a few new faces that don't... Uh, don't know how I have it configured. We should find a couple of photo variation short prints in here somewhere too. Ryan O'Hearn for the Royals in the Purple Shimmer. That one is not numbered and is that 70th logo? No, it isn't, but it also is not numbered. For the Dodgers, Starling Heredia, Heredia, Heredia. Actually, someone last night requested that the autograph cards go in sleeves as soon as they are hit. So normally I don't do that until after the break, but we'll go ahead and do that tonight. I mean, truly, I don't know that it, it really makes that much difference because they have other cards touching them inside the pack as well so they're just sitting there on a mat but I don't know so we'll do it that way tonight anyway Justin Dunn for the Mets that one is unnumbered and it does have the little 70th anniversary logo up there at the top that I was telling you about earlier and that was of course the blue parallel in the 70th anniversary There's a Jimenez Arizona Fall League. Have a nice little uh, Trevor Clifton for the Cubbies in the green parallel to 99. Chance Adams. And of course, you know, there's a lot of base in here. So for sure, everybody ends up getting something and when the stack of base gets to a certain height i do generally pick it up and put them into smaller stacks over on the sorting mat i don't like the stacks to get super high especially back there in that corner next to those boxes just in case you know don't want anything to topple over on top of them this is one of our standard refractors will be numbered again to 499 this is paul goldschmidt with the Diamondbacks. I 
see a little purple shimmer coming up. This is Diaz for the Brewers. That one is unnumbered. We need to find an Acuna autograph. We need to find a Brendan Rogers. I'm just seeing some of these cards go by and kind of creating a, a wish list. Uh, see if we can conjure them up. Bryson Brigman for the Mariners, unnumbered. Well, if I can get the sleeve open, it might be helpful. Eric Hosmer for the Royals to $4.99. Green Parallel, Zach Britton for the Orioles, that one to $99. Kyle Schwarber to $4.99 for the Cubs. Mr. Joey Votto to $2.50 for the Reds. My poor little Cincinnati Reds. <laughs> One of these days. That looks like that should be numbered. It is. It is to 25 on the Jimenez for the Cubbies on the Arizona Fall League insert to 25. I think that's the first numbered Arizona Fall League that I have uh, come across. All of our others have been just the regular unnumbered. So those are not falling super often anyway. Dodgers, Josh Spores, maybe. That's the 70th anniversary parallel unnumbered. <coughs> Excuse me. It's that happy time of year when fall starts and, I don't know, something gets in the... Something seems to get in the air every fall that really... It's my allergies going. Justin Dunn for the Mets to $4.99. Nice little Alex Bregman for the Astros. Speaking of the Astros earlier, that one unnumbered, of course. Purple Parallel, Justin Dunn for the Mets. That one is to $2.50. Purple Parallel, Will Myers to $2.50 for the Padres. Oh, here we go. Bro... Aha, if I could speak, Bowman Chrome Sensation, Albert Abreu for the Yankees. And this is number 250, and it's first in the series. You guys know how I love the first in the series stuff. So that is number one of 50. Nice, nice little hit there for the Yankees. Let's go ahead and move some of these. A little rowdy to Les in the purple shimmer for the Toronto Blue Jays, unnumbered. Green parallel to uh, 99 for the Rangers. Hey. Cespedes was trying to jump ship there, but he didn't quite make it. I, th I think that's the, yeah, I guess that's the regular Rizzo. 
Sometimes I look at them and have to think for a minute if it's the photo variation or not, but that was the regular uh, Rizzo. Logan Ice for the Indians, unnumbered. If anybody happens to know what the score is uh, in the Yankees Astros game and you feel like throwing it into chat, I would be grateful. Tory Hunter Jr. to 499 for the Angels. Ryan O'Hearn for the Royals. That is unnumbered. Cole Hamels for the Rangers to 499. Well, I got a piece of the wrapper decided to stay with that card. Oh, and who is somebody didn't get lifted up with the pile there? That was Jesse Winker who was trying to stay behind. Lewis Brinson for the Brewers to four ninety nine. It's still two O Astros and it's the bottom of the eight. Thank you, James. I appreciate that. It doesn't sound like, uh, well, I shouldn't say it doesn't seem like the score is going to change because, man, apparently it changed really quickly last night, <laughs> Cubs and Nationals. I was in here, so I missed that, but I read about it. Stephen Dugar, Giants to four ninety nine. Well, there's a little short print photo variation for Mr. Dansby Swanson for the Braves. Those are not numbered, uh, but they are generally one or two per case on the um, short prints. And they have been our rookies for the most part. Like I found a Bregman, we found a Judge, I think, I'm trying to remember if we found a Bellinger, there's that Dansby. So most of our current year rookies uh, have, maybe not all of them, but a lot of the high profile ones have the short print photo variations in Bowman Chrome. Nick Williams, Green Shimmer to 99 for the Phillies. Little Cody Bellinger, just base. David Fletcher for the Angels. That one is unnumbered. Ah, I swear it is so hard to like, you know how when you're in the grocery store and they give you the produce bags and you have to like kind of, you know, like almost rub them together sometimes to get them to open. Sometimes trying to get those sleeves open with my left hand feels like it is when you are trying to get those bags open in the grocery store. Benintendi to $4.99 for the Red Sox. I don't know why my left hand just doesn't always want to cooperate uh, with things I am trying to do. I guess we all are that way to a certain extent, though, with our dominant hands and our less dominant hands. Aurora to one fifty for the Giants. All right, now we have got to open up all of these other boxes, which is going to take a while again, much like it did when we opened our first set of boxes. So if you have, uh, if you want to take a little break and intermission, so to speak, you're going to have some time to do it while I'm getting all of this stuff out of here. We 
got five star baseball coming pretty soon too. I can't remember the exact release date, but I don't think we're very far out from it. Of course, one of the things, one of the series that I particularly like is Bowman's Best. You know, that doesn't ever come out until late in the year, December, sometime. Mid to late December, usually. Um, but I'm super excited about Bowman's Best this year. Because, you know, Bowman's Best is always loaded, or at least I, most of the time, it's loaded. And with as good a rookie class as we've had this year, I think it's going to be awesome. And we're going to have Bowman High Tech this year for the first time as well. You know, Topps High Tech is nothing new, but Bowman High Tech is. So that'll be coming along somewhere before we get done with uh, 2017 baseball. to think what else we still got a fair amount of baseball releases to come out really i guess dynasty we haven't done dynasty five star bowman's best um the high tech what else is there oh panini's chronicles if you haven't heard me speak about that before i'm really excited about that one and the more information they give us the more <laughs> pictures they show us the happier i am it looks like it's going to be super super cool it's primarily uh, our high-profile rookies, our Aaron Judges and Benintendis and such. And then some of the, like, hot superstar-type players of the game from the way it reads. But they're putting all of the cards that they make for other things that they don't make for baseball will be in this series. So there will be the potential to pull, if you guys know what Spectra looks like, if you've ever done a Spectra break in basketball or in football, so they're going to put Spectra in there, like Crown Royal, I think, will be in there. Um, pretty much anything they don't make in baseball, which they make, what, National Treasures and uh, Immaculate and like that. But there's still a lot of high-profile Panini series that don't normally do baseball, and they're making those cards for Chronicles. That one, I think, is... It's either the week before Thanksgiving or it's the week of Thanksgiving. It's right around that time because they moved the release date on it. It's supposed to be a little earlier in November and they changed it. So that's another one I'm really looking forward to. I think it's going to be a really fun set. I, From all the sales materials that I've seen, it looks awesome. And, of course, we've got Leaf uh, Metal Draft Baseball. That's not too far down the road. And Leaf Valiant Baseball is going to follow the same kind of uh, configuration that we had for Leaf Valiant Football. I don't know if you guys saw any of the breaks for Leaf Valiant Football. But it had three or four, I can't remember the exact number, three or four autograph cards in it. Uh, each one was, you know, already in a sleeve and a top loader when you took it out of the box. And then they had one graded card. And the graded card was guaranteed to be 9.5 or higher. And we even pulled some black label tens out of there, which, you know, Beckett black label is as high as you can be graded. So we even pulled some black label tens out of Valiant Football. So if we can get some of that out of Valiant Baseball, it's going to be awesome. Of course, I do still have um, Impeccable Football, which... You know, I don't know. Maybe that is the universe sending me a message, right? Because, like, last night I tried to put up the break for Impeccable Football random team uh, break.
to see if anyone was interested in buying into it. And that's when the broadcast software like locked up. I came out to start early thinking, I, I mean, I was like so happy. I was ahead of the game. And then it would not initiate the stream on YouTube. Ended up having to reboot the broadcast software three times last night. And each time you do it, it takes six or seven minutes for it to cycle back through all of its crap before it will let you uh, attempt to initiate a stream again. So yeah, finally, after the third reboot, it managed to go last night. But of course, at that point, then, you know, I hadn't put up the immaculate football. So tonight, I come out... <laughs> And I've got it all set up. Once again, my spreadsheet's ready to go. And I have everything rolling. I'm not as early as I was last night, but it was early. You know, like five minutes early or something. Start the broadcast, and I'm just like, I can't find the chat. The chat will not load. And then I'm going to, like, the main page, and I can't even see the live stream. But then I go on another page, and there's the live stream. So I try to open it. It won't open. And I'm like, what is going on, right? I'm I'm thinking you guys are all on there. You can already hear it and see it. So I'm trying to let you know that, hey, I can't get chat to load. I don't know what's going on, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so it takes me like five minutes, <laughs> four or five minutes to figure out that something is just not right. Then it hits me. Oh, yeah. There had been an update to the software, so they probably changed the settings. Go look in the settings. Oh, yeah. The whole entire live stream up to that point had been set to private, which means, like, no one could see it or hear it, which is, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, anyway, I didn't get an impeccable football up again tonight because by the time I figured that out and we got it all sorted out and on track... It was time to do the time to do tonight's break. So maybe that is the universe's way of telling me to not do impeccable football that way. I don't know. And you'll find this funny probably. It's funny in a just weird sort of way. Many of you know I have uh, two cats. I have brother and sister. And usually you can hear them downstairs, you know, they're carousing, as my mother would say, you know, fighting or playing or whatever they're doing. So often you can hear them downstairs during the breaks. Anyway, uh, one of them, the boy, he is uh, black. He's a solid black cat. So, of course, today being Friday the 13th and me having one of those days and him being a black cat, you can imagine what happened. <laughs> Yeah, I'm walking in the house, taking everything to the post office. I'm just coming back from that, getting ready to fix something for, for dinner. And I feed the cats, and I start to walk into the kitchen, which is covered in a hard tile floor. And the little boy, the black cat, has been sitting, you know, over there eating, just minding his own business. All of a sudden, stops eating runs right between my legs and bam knocks me right down to the floor and of course i land on the tile floor on my wrist <laughs> i'm just like can you even like is that not just almost the just the cherry on top of the day that the black cat is the one that runs between my legs and trips me on friday the 13th i don't know but hey, it could be a lot worse. At least, uh, at least I can laugh about it. At least I can break a bone. So there's that. And then he just kept eating. He had a mouthful of food, as a matter of fact, when he ran between my legs and tripped me anyway. So like, where was he going? What was he doing? I have no idea. And then after he trips me and I'm laying on the floor, you know, kind of moaning and groaning a little bit. He just sits across from me, looking at me, just chewing his food that he already had in his mouth. Like, seriously? Oh, brother. Well, we are 
making a dent in it. I almost have them all out of the wrappers. Of course, the rest of it, once we start looking at them, the fun part, we won't have to stop again. We'll just be able to keep right on trucking once I get them all out of here. And of course, you know the thing I thought of when I was laying in the kitchen floor after having been tripped by my black cat on Friday the 13th <laughs> and landing on my wrist. The first thing I'm thinking of as I'm laying there is, oh my gosh, if I have broken my wrist, I will not, how will I be able to do my breaks? <laughs> yeah, that's the first thing that's going through my mind. Oh no, because I love doing the breaks. I think it's so much fun. So I really do enjoy that part. part that's not as much fun are all the people that make life uh, very difficult, i.e. they don't hit something in a break, so then they file cases and stuff like that. It happens with alarming frequency these days. People just kind of go their own way. But there's also an awful lot of really awesome people on eBay that do breaks too. And I have to remind myself of that, that 98% of the people are awesome and 2% of the people are not. But somehow, you know, it's always the 2% that you think of, right? Because they're the ones that cause you grief, but it shouldn't be that way. I need to try to remember the 98% like you guys. There is Mr. Nolan in the Blue paralleled 150 for the Rockies. Diaz for the Brewers to 499. There's a nice little hit for the Orioles. Austin Hayes, purple parallel to 250. I think Austin Hayes is. Oh, gosh, he's definitely in the Orioles' top 10 prospects, isn't he? I think he's he's actually, he might even be in the top, I think he's maybe in the top uh, three or four of the Orioles' prospects. He's, I think Austin Davis is supposed to ultimately be pretty good. Jamison Fisher to 499 for the White Sox. Ramel Tapia to 499 for the Rockies. I know, Anonymous. Can you believe two nights in a row for Hayes? That is pretty pretty good, isn't it? Oh, and James, you gave me a score update, and I missed it. 2-1, top of the ninth, two outs. I'm assuming it is still Astros on top. Well, it would have to be, because Astros are the only ones that had two runs while ago. You see me having to, like, work that through <laughs> mentally. Oh, it's been challenging for me today, for sure. But yeah, that is pretty nice to hit Austin Hayes a couple nights in a row. Um, Adrian Morjon for the Padres to four ninety nine, and I think the the Hayes last night was a parallel too, and maybe was it purple? Might have been purple last night as well. I'm pretty sure it was a parallel though. Maybe we'll also find. Uh, Another Beau Bichette tonight, right? That'd be nice. Another Christian Aurora and some of our other hits from last night. I wouldn't mind seeing them a second time around. There's a little Victor Robles for the Nationals to 150. Poor Nationals. They have such a good team and such a bad, bad luck maybe. A bad way to go in... The playoffs, every year something, it seems like, happens to them. Louis Alexander Basabe, or maybe Louis, I said Louis, probably Louis, for the White Sox. Oh, Astros win. Okay, all right, well, Astros have the first, first one then. Thank you, James, for keeping me posted on that. 
I'm not really awfully surprised that they did, but we'll see what happens with the next one. Brandon Woodruff to $4.99 for the Brewers. In many ways, I think the Yankees may have met their match, but then in other ways, you look at how they came out of the whole, uh, out of the two zip hole with the Indians, and you think, well, I'm not ever really going to count them out. Denelson Lamette. I had to think about that one a minute, as you saw. I think that's Denelson, maybe, Lamette, or the Padres. Nice little Brendan Rogers in the blue parallel. You'll see that is the 70th anniversary, so not numbered. Giancarlo to $4.99 for the Marlins. Purple Shimmer, Brian Anderson for the Marlins, not numbered. Keegan Aiken for the Orioles. That one is also not numbered. I see a redemption, or the edge of a redemption. Khalil Lee that we were speaking about uh, at the start of the break. He is going to be a Kansas City Royal, but you also know that I am going to go to the checklist and verify that at the end of the break. So we will get that one sorted out ahead of time. There is Khalil Lee, as a matter of fact, in his Royals uniform. Purple Shimmer, unnumbered. Tanaka to 99 for the Yankees. These stacks are getting a little bit, uh, the one in the back anyway, a little bit higher than I like, so I'm going to move those. Oh, James, do you have, there's another piece of the wrapper. James, do you have uh, the Royals tonight? There is Mr. John Duplantier, however you say his last name. I'm sure that's not it. Uh, but that is to 250 for the Diamondbacks. You know, we've had breaks where we find him in multiples, and then you don't see him again for a little while, and then he starts popping up again. So he seems to kind of come and, come and go. Brandon Marsh for the Angels. Purple Shimmer unnumbered. Here's Willie Calhoun in his Arizona Fall lead card. I'm sure we've probably seen him go by before, and I just didn't notice that it was him. Stephen Dugar for the Giants. Seems like that might be the second one, unnumbered. Although sometimes I call them out uh, for other things, you know, just the parallels, and I will have that in my head when I think we take multiples. i got to get another pack of sleeves. Set back down in my squeaky chair. <laughs> Zagunas for the Cubbies. Blue parallel to 150. Oh, just laid the wrong one over there. That was base. That is the Bowman Scout. And again, if someone wants to do 
a recap of Bowman Scouts uh, Top 100 or the Arizona Fall League or the Numbered Parallels, Mitch Keller for the Pirates or the Refractors. Uh, if you want to do a recap of any of that, they are sorted into little piles over here. You would just need to jump into chat and let me know. Otherwise, if you don't uh, want to do those, we'll just recap the signatures at the end of the night. Oh, you do have the Royals. Well, good. That's a nice little hit for you then, James. There is Anthony Banda also for the D-backs. That is to 150 on the blue shimmer. Little Aaron Judge base rookie went by. Here's some gold finally tonight. Again, I think that's getting tall. I'm going to move it. That is for the Blue Jays with the Richard Urena to 50. And the, oh, that one's upside down. <laughs> the gold parallel. Well, that would be very difficult to get it in the sleeve with the sleeve upside down, wouldn't it? A little Dansby purple parallel for the Braves to 250. Another purple parallel. This one for my Cincinnati Reds, Vladimir Gutierrez to 250. Munoz for the A's to 499. Purple parallel for the Dodgers, Mitchell White to 250. For the Rangers, Jose Trevino. That one is not numbered. Well, what is going on right there? Let's try and actually get the sleeve open, get the card in. All right, let's just get a different one. Oh, so hard to do that left-handed for me for some reason. David Dahl for the Rockies to four For the Tigers, Adam Ravenel to 250. Is that Chris Bryant a parallel? It seems like it should be, but I guess it isn't. But it doesn't it look like I guess I guess that's his regular card in there. We just don't see it that much, I suppose. There's Josh Spores again for the Dodgers. That in the blue parallel to 150. Nationals. How about a little gold Nick Banks for you? That should be number 250. And it is number 26 of 50 to be exact. And there is my little kitty thinking about jumping in the wrappers. Let's do this at the same time. Grayson Long for the Angels. Grayson is not numbered. Josh Bell in the green parallel for the Pirates to 99.
Tukey Toussaint in the blue shimmer. That is to 150 for the Braves. Closing in on the last of it, I think I see our relic card over here in the stack to the left. Those typically fall one per case. We did have uh, a case where we did not get a relic and we ended up getting a different type of signature card with an inscription on it in place of the relic. Beltre for the Rangers in the gold parallel numbered 250. Actually, I guess we may as well just do that at the same time. Another Aaron Judge base rookie went by. Have a, a hit coming out for the A's. Daniel Gossett. That one unnumbered. Oh, that's that same stupid sleeve I had a minute ago that I couldn't get open. Let's just try it again with a different one. <laughs> that one just does not get along with me. And then I keep picking it up. Ryan Schimpf to $4.99 for the Padres. We're closing in on it, so if we have not hit what you're looking for yet, let's try and find it in this last uh, little bit here. Mitchell White in the purple shimmer for the Dodgers, unnumbered. There's our relic. Let's go ahead and get... Uh, Oh, it's a gold relic, no less. Paul De Jong for the Cardinals. Relic and on card auto number 10 of 50 on that one. And that needs a different size sleeve. Nice little gold relic coming out for the cards. If you happen to miss me saying it earlier, I am expecting to get this break for Bowman Chrome out the door probably Tuesday or Wednesday. As always, if I can get to it faster, I certainly will, but that's what I'm anticipating right now. Josh Spores again for the Dodgers, unnumbered. You do want to do a recap of all the color. Okay, we will do that. That is not a problem. Javier for the Twins to $4.99. So you don't want the base refractors, obviously, or the uh, you just literally want the, the numbered, well, even the unnumbered, if you say color, then you want to see the shimmers and, and all of the color, I'm assuming. Mitch Keller for the Pirates to 150. Now that stack's getting kind of high, especially with the sleeves on them. They make them very much uh, prone to sliding around, which is another reason I don't typically do them until after the break. Because I sit here, if you guys, well, it probably doesn't matter to you, but after the break, before I get up and start doing other things. I sit here and get everything in its sleeves and its top loaders or one touches or whatever it's going to go in. Um, 
So normally that's when I do all that. So that what in the sleeves right now are kind of wanting to slide around on me. That is to 150 on the Austin Hayes blue shimmer. And those were just two more base. So we have got uh, our signature hits. Our relic. I've got to go to the checklist on the Khalil Lee. I mean, we know Khalil Lee is, is royal, but you also know that I will go to the checklist to look it up because that's what I always do. And I also like to get it in a sleeve so I can write on it because I have found that some people do not like you to write directly on the redemption card. So I try to write on the sleeve instead these days. I mean, honestly, I've always gotten them from other people with the team name written right on the card. It's never bothered me, but that's, you know, because I redeem them myself. I don't resell them or anything. I literally, you know, scratch off the back and redeem it and then toss it. But I guess not everybody does that. All right, I am scrolling through the checklist. Bear with me. I have to get down to the part where we are going to find Khalil Lee, which will take me a second. Because for whatever reason, they put these things way at the bottom of the checklist. And there he is, and it does say Royals, which we knew he was going to be. But I'm happier now because it's all verified. So, well, we may as well do, you wanted to do the color first, so we may, or do the color, so we may as well do that first. So, we'll just, actually, I don't even... Do you, do you need the backs of this too, Anonymous, or do you just want the front? Let me know which you prefer if you only care about literally you're tallying the, the, uh, the color for your team or something and you don't care about seeing the back. Let me know. If you do want to see the back, obviously I'll keep flipping them. Yeah, the Khalil Lee is, uh, you don't need to see the back. Okay, awesome. And we can, we'll just buzz through the front part then. And this should, I believe this is, except, well, I might have put the Arizona Fall League one that's a color uh, to 50. I probably left it stacked in the Arizona Fall League stack, so I may need to fish it out. But otherwise, I think this is all of them. I do try to, as you see, set them aside as we go. Every once in a while, I'll forget and maybe stack one in the wrong place, but not too terribly often. And, of course, this is not color, but it's uh, stacked there because it's the short print uh, on the Dansby Swanson. So I just, I didn't really have anywhere else to stack the short print. I just stacked it with the, with the color. And last was Tory Hunter. And then I need to find, did I show you these already? That are sitting, I think I did, I moved them. Yeah, I moved them back over there after I showed them to you. But I need to see where I put that, uh, oh, there he is, our Arizona Fall League. I did put him, I thought I probably had. I did have him in with the other Arizona Fall League cards as opposed to being stacked with the with the color. So that was the recap of it. Now let's go into our hits. Our redemption for Khalil Lee is for the Royals. Our sweet little uh, autographed relic in the gold parallel numbered 250 is for the Cardinals. And then much like we did with our color, we're just going to look at the front of these. Of course, obviously we've already looked at the back and the numbering on them when we pulled them originally, but... This is just the quick little recap if you're tallying up what you're going to be getting in the mail or something like that. It makes it easier to see it all at once, I think. Especially when there's a lot of hits, you know. I mean, because trying to remember 24 
hits out of here is uh, not an easy thing to do. All right, that is it for tonight. <clears throat> Just remember the next one you see up, which I think in Sunday night is the jumbo. So it is a different configuration. There's no base in it. It's all hits. And then after that, we'll roll back into some of the standard cases like we opened tonight. And then we'll probably alternate between the standard and the jumbo throughout next week. So as you're looking at them, just, you know, make sure that you look in the title or in the description at the box count. Obviously the, um, you know, next to the box count, it'll say if it's jumbo or HTA or whatever. So, so that is the main thing to remember out of that. And thank goodness we are almost, I'm nine minutes away from being out of Friday the 13th. And I'm going to be quite grateful because <laughs> it's been a rip roaring day, as they say. Meanwhile, thank you. I appreciate very much everybody uh, bidding and breaking and keeping me company in chat and all the other fun things you guys do to, to help me out with this. I really enjoy breaking and I appreciate you being a part of it. I hope I will see you again on another break. In the meantime, have a nice weekend. I will see you the next time. Bye guys.